Hello, friends, and welcome to the Architecture Enthusiast and to the Taj Mahal, built in 1628 in Agra, India. Shah Jahan was the fifth ruler of the Mughal dynasty. During his third regnal year, his favorite wife, known as Mumtaz Mahal, died in childbirth. Deeply saddened, the emperor started planning the construction of a suitable permanent resting place for his beloved wife almost immediately. The result of his effort and resources was the creation of what was called the luminous tomb in contemporary Mughal texts and is what the world knows today as the Taj Mahal. In general terms, Sunni Muslims favor a simple burial under an open sky, but notable domed mausolee for Mughals as well as for other Central Asian rulers was built prior to Shah Jahan's rule. So in this regard, the Taj Mahal is not unique. The Taj is, however, exceptional for its monumental scale, stunning gardens, lavish ornamentation, and its overt use of white marble. Entry to the Taj Mahal complex via the forecourt, which in the 16th century housed shops and through a monumental gate of inlaid and highly decorated red sandstone, made for a first impression of grand splendor and symmetry. Aligned along a long river channel, through this gate is the Taj, set majestically on a raised platform on the north end. The rectangular complex runs roughly 1,860 feet on the north-south axis and 1,000 feet on the east-west axis. The white marble mausoleum is flanked on either side by identical buildings in red sandstone. One of these serves as a mosque, and the other, whose exact function is unknown, provides architectural balance. The marble structure is topped by a bulbous dome and surrounded by four minarets of equal height. While the minarets in Islamic architecture are usually associated with mosques for use by the muezzin who leads the call for prayer, here, they are not functional, but ornamental, once again underscoring the Mughal focus on structural balance and harmony. The interior floor plan of the Taj exhibits the Hasht Bishi'isht, or Eight Levels Principle, alluding to the Eight Levels of Paradise. Consisting of eight halls and side rooms connected to the main space in a cross-axial plan, the favorite design for Islamic architecture from the mid-15th century, the center of the main chamber holds Mumtaz Mahal's intricately decorated marble cenotaph on a raised platform. The emperor's cenotaph was laid down beside hers after he died three decades later. Both are encased in an octagon of exquisitely carved white marble screens. The coffins bearing their remains lies in spaces directly beneath the cenotaphs. Quranic verses inscribed into the walls of the building and designs inlaid with semi-precious stones of coral, onyx, carnelian, amethyst, and lapis lazuli add to the splendor of the Taj's white exterior. The dominant theme of the carved imagery is floral, showing some recognizable and other fanciful species of flowers, another link to the theme of paradise. Some of the Taj Mahal's architecture fuses aspects from other Islamic traditions, but other aspects reflect with indigenous style elements. In particular, this is evident in the umbrella-shaped ornamental chahatras, or dome-shaped pavilions, atop the pavilions and minarets. And whereas most Mughal-era buildings tended to use redstone for exteriors and functional architecture, such as military buildings and forts, reserving white marble for special inner spaces or for the tombs of holy men, the Taj's interior main structure is constructed of white marble and the auxiliary buildings are composed of red sandstone. 
This white and red color scheme of the built complex may correspond with principles laid down in ancient Hindu texts in which white stood for purity and the priestly class and red represented the color of the warrior class. From the outset, the Taj was conceived of as a building that would be remembered for its magnificence for ages to come, and to that end the best material and skills were employed. Mir Abd al-Karim was designated as the lead architect. Abdul Haq was chosen as the calligrapher, and Ustad Ahmad Lahari was made the supervisor. Shah Jahan made sure that the principles of Mughal architecture were incorporated into the design throughout the building process.